What's up everyone, it's Trent aka Otrademark here and in this video I'm going to give you guys step-by-step -step instructions for becoming a top 10 player in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Now Galaxy of Heroes is a turn-based strategy collector's game for iOS and Android and uh, you can also play uh, the game on the PC if you have an Android emulator. Uh, so it is a freemium game on mobile and like most freemium games the developer limits how much you can progress per day by giving you a limited amount of resources and you can progress faster and gain advantages by spending real money on the game however I want to make it very clear at the beginning of this video that being a top tier player in the game does not require any monetary investment I've been able to replicate this process on three accounts at various spending levels. My main account is a high spending or whale account, which has nearly every character in the game unlocked and it ranks first on its ladder every day. My second account is a low spending account, which has only purchased the bare essentials and it has also reached rank one, but it usually ranks in the top five each day. And then my last account is a free to play account, which reached uh, a peak of rank two and Consistently, it placed in the top 10 every day until I stopped playing on it due to time constraints. So regardless of how much uh, money you spend on the game, if you follow these instructions, you'll be able to rise to the top. Now, the way that this game works is that when you first start playing, you're placed in a ladder with 20,000 other players who also started playing the game around the same time as you. You compete with these players for resources, that are awarded based upon your uh, your rank on that ladder. So basically, the higher your rank is on your ladder, the more rewards that you get. Also, as you level up, you unlock new sections of the game which give you access to even more resources. So what this creates is a system where basically the rich get richer or the top players uh, tend to stay at the top because they have access to more resources than everyone else. So by far, the most important time to know what you're doing and to gain an advantage is during the first week that you play the game. And that's exactly what this guide is going to help you do. If you want full step-by-step -step -step text instructions, you can visit my website, gamingupgrade.com. For that guide, I'll post a link to the full guide in the description of this video. Otherwise, you can continue watching the video for the walkthrough of your first day playing the game. Now, as a preface to the first time that you play the game, your first session of playing the game or the first day that you play is going to take a much larger time investment than normal. So I would recommend that you have at least two hours to devote to the game the first time that you play it. When you first launch the game, you're gonna enter, enter a five to 10 minute tutorial that just explains the basics about the game. This cannot be skipped. Uh, when you're done with that tutorial, you're gonna agree to the terms and then you're going to enter your in-game name or be prompted to. Now I highly recommend that you enter whatever custom in-game name that you want at this point because uh, currently there is no way at all to change your in-game name. Uh, maybe that feature will be, I know it's very requested because a lot of people on the leaderboards have the default Moly Liza name or whatever. Um, but currently there's no way to change your in-game name, so it's very important if you want that to be unique that you change it at this time. Once you actually get into the main home screen for the game, you're going to get a few welcome rewards. So you'll get, you'll get some crystals from Capital Games. You'll also get, like, if you're on a Samsung device, you'll get a Samsung starter pack. Uh, you'll get your, your characters and just a, a bunch of free stuff there at the beginning. And then it's going to allow you to start playing the game. So you want to go directly into the light side battles and you want to complete light side battle 1C. And it should be really easy to complete that with three stars. But once you complete light side battle 1C, the very first thing that you want to do when you finish that is at the very top of your screen, there's the yellow lightning bolt with the green plus sign next to it. You want to click on that and it's going to ask you if you want to purchase 120 energy and 20 sim tickets for 50 crystals and you want to click purchase there and use your first 50 crystals for energy and some sim tickets. Now click back on light side battle 1C and just click on the sim button there next to battle. 
and you're just going to sim it over and over. So sim is basically just simulating that battle. You get all of the rewards for simming a uh, for simming a battle. However, you don't actually have to play through it. So it's a very fast way of, of basically looking for for gear or leveling up or getting resources, whatever. So you want to sim all the way up to level 10. Uh, as you're going up to level 10, you'll unlock some more stuff like Jawa. Uh, you'll also unlock squad arena battles. And at this point, you want to go into the data cards. So go to your home screen, go into data cards, and you want to purchase a single chromium data card. Now that will cost 350 crystals, but the first single chromium data card that you purchase has a guaranteed full character inside of it. Now, your hope is that you get a good character from this first one. Um, all characters, when you unlock them, are going to have a certain star level, from one star all the way up to four star. And then you can promote those characters all the way up to seven stars with additional shards. But basically, um, what you're looking for is a high star level character on this from this first card. So like a three star character or a four star character, if you can get it from this card would be great. If you don't get a good character, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. You can still carry on. Uh, but the next thing that you want to actually do is go back to the home screen and go into squad arena. And when the first time you enter squad arena, um, the hut is going to talk to you for a little bit. And then you're going to see your, you can click on ranks at the bottom and you're going to see your initial arena ranking. Now this initial ranking is very, very important for your progress because how high you rank on this first time, and it's mostly just luck, but you're going to receive a ranking of from one to 20,000 based upon when you start playing. And whenever the server hits or the, the ladder hits 20,000, it just starts a new one. So what you're looking for is a good initial ranking, something better than 5,000. Ideally, it would be better than even 1,000. However, you, you, know, you can see that the odds are kind of stacked against you. Now, if you don't get a good arena ranking initially, um, you kind of want to, at this point, you want to look at the free character that you got and your initial ranking. And you want to determine one of two things. Should I go forward from this point or should I restart the game? Now, if you have a pretty good character that you got and a pretty good ranking, then go ahead and start move forward. Uh, if you got a good character but kind of a bad arena ranking, what I would tell you is if you are a spender, so if you're going to buy you know, some crystals, then having a lower arena rank is fine because you can refresh your arena battles over and over again and, and just climb the ladder. If you're going to be a free-to-play player and you're not going to spend any money on the game, then it's even more important that you have a good starting arena ranking. I would say the arena ranking is more important than your character if you're a free-to-play player. So kind of balance out those two things. If you do decide to restart your game, what you have to do is there's a gear box in the top left hand corner you have to click it and then click sign into Google Play this is on if you're on Android um, I think it's similar on on iOS but I'm not sure of the exact instructions but basically what you want to do is you want to sign into Google Play and you want to uh, when you first sign in it's going to ask you if you want to continue or create a new account and you just want to click create new account and that will tie the brand new account to whatever Google account you logged into. And then you could continue doing that. You know, sign into Google Play if you want to restart again, create a new Google Play account, and, you know, just keep restarting your account. Um, like I said, it's all based upon what full character you get and what your initial ranking is. But once you have a decent arena ranking and a character that you're okay to move forward with, uh, then you can just go ahead and continue from level 10. So uh, a couple of the next things that are going to be that are going to happen, the game is going to prompt you to connect, you know, to rate it. It's going to ask you to connect to Facebook. I highly recommend you connect it to Facebook. That will give you some more bonus crystals. Also, at this point, you should consider uh, buying the starter packs. So especially the dark side starter pack. Now, the dark side starter pack is offered to you really early in the leveling. I'm not sure exactly what level. But it's basically five dollars, 
and it has some crystals, it includes some shards, and it also includes one free full character that's either Count Dooku, Savage Opress, or uh, General Veers. Now, Dooku and Savage are both great characters, and Veers is not bad e either, especially in the early levels. So this Dark Side starter pack for $5 plus the crystals, I mean, this this starter pack is by far the best value purchase in the game. So if you're going to buy anything, I highly recommend it be the Dark Side starter pack. Once you spend at least $5 on the game, you also will be offered a crystal subscription. And what that is, is that it costs $12 and you'll be you'll receive 100 crystals every single day that you log in for the next 21 days. Um, and if you don't log in, you lose those 100 crystals. But if you want to be a top 10 player, you're going to have to log in every day anyways. So the crystal subscription is really good value. It's actually uh, much more discounted than buying crystals any other way. So that's also a pretty good investment. The rest of the starter packs are questionable. They range in price anywhere from $25 all the way up to $100 for the starter packs. And that might sound like a lot. Um, it it kind of depends on the, the late game viability for these characters. So if you want to learn more about those starter packs, the bundles, uh, I have kind of an explanation of all of those on my website that you can go check out. Um, but for the most part, it you know, it all depends on what type of team you want to have and, and who you pulled from your first full character and whatnot. And a lot of synergy uh, goes, a lot of kind of strategizing goes into whether or not you buy these bundles. But I, I would say, what I will tell you is that these limited time offers are truly limited time. Uh, they, they'll give you the offer for something like four to seven days. And when that expires, that offer is truly gone. Uh, you will never get that offer again. At least so far, CG has never reintroduced those offers to any existing players. So, uh, it you know, it is really early in the player cycle, but if you do plan on playing this game for a while um, and you want to invest in the characters earlier, that is the best time to do it. Um, as far as purchasing additional Chromium data cards, I wouldn't recommend that quite yet. Uh, is Chromium data cards are kind of an all or nothing thing right now. Uh, basically, the way that the characters work is that you'll unlock some characters, but some characters can only be upgraded by purchasing additional data cards. So what that means for you is if you want an end game viable uh, Chromium character, you're looking at like at least $500, probably even $1,000 spent to actually using that that character in any capacity at the late game so you know it's a, it's really kind of an all or nothing thing there if you are going to spend money on the game initially i would recommend the starter packs or crystals uh, to level up faster instead all right so you have your initial characters maybe your dark side starter pack and whatnot uh, the next thing that you want to do is you want to finish all of the light side battles in area one you're just going to three star those. It should be pretty easy again. And then you're going to just level and gear your characters uh, and just continue simming all of those areas in, in area one. So all those battles, just level and gear your characters up to about level 15 and maybe gear level two or as high as you can go. And the characters that you start out with are all pretty much going to be the same for everyone. You're going to start with Chewie, the uh, Jedi Consular, and Talia are probably going to be your three main people. Then you can have your dark side starter character if you bought that, or you could use Jawa. And then your fifth character will probably be your the full character you pulled from the Chromium data card, uh, whoever that is. You could also use like the like IG86 from the free pack, um, and you're gonna replace these characters quickly anyway, so it's not a huge deal who you start with as your first five. But I would highly recommend if you bar bought the dark side starter pack, and if you're free character is a good character that you keep them in your arena team for you know the inevitable future for a while um when you reach light side battle area three i i believe so you want to finish all of area two and when you reach area three you're going to be able to borrow an uh, a leader from another player in the game and at this point you can start to add allies uh, or friends within the game and you can borrow their leaders to progress now it's very very important if you want to get gain an advantage to add some powerful allies that you can borrow early 
because it will make you it will make your progress so much easier when you're able to borrow a strong allies uh, le ally leader. Um, you're also going to unlock challenges around this portion, and so basically what you're going to do at this point is once you're around level your your five main characters are around level 15, gear level two or three you're going to start going in to arena and start battling other players. Now, when you go into arena and you pick who you're going to battle, you will always want to try and look for the person with the highest rank. And that's always going to be the person on the far right hand side. So it's going to show you three players and then you can click refresh and you can continue refreshing until you find a player that has a really good ranking and you're going to try and jump as many spots as possible. So like, if you're ranked around 5,000 or something, you probably can jump 800 or 900 spots at a time. I think I started around rank 3,000 and I was able to jump around 500 spots my first few battles. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna jump huge amounts of spots during your first battles, and then as you go past like a thousand rank, then you're gonna you know it's gonna be less, and then as you enter the top 100, you're gonna only be able to maybe jump 20 spots or so, uh, maybe 30 spots. And then as you get into like the top 20, you're only going to be able to jump, you know, maybe like uh, five or six spots. So um, basically the clamping occurs the higher your rank is, uh, the less spots that you can jump. But what you're going to do is you're going to go into your arena battles. You're going to find the person with the best ranking that you can swap with and battle them. Now, if you do this correctly, you should be, you pretty much should have a higher power level than anyone else in the ladder but if you happen to see someone that spent a lot of money and knows what they're doing early maybe they have a higher power level than you if you see someone like that just avoid them the last thing you want to do is is lose an arena battle early in this process because that will really set you back so um, after you complete an arena battle and you take their position there's going to be a 10 minute cooldown on fighting again in the arena during that 10 minute cooldown period you want to go around doing kind of rotating the rest of your things that you want to do every day. So you want to go through and you want to do your challenges, which also will unlock at level 15. You want to do light side battles, dark side battles, and you also want to do your daily activities. So on the home page of the game or on the home screen, you're going to have your daily activities. And every single day, you want to make sure that you complete everything that is listed under that list because uh, doing those daily activities earns you crystals, credits, and a lot of XP. Uh, that that X, early XP is really crucial to leveling up fast. Throughout the day, you're also going to be able to collect energy for free at three times at uh, between 12 and 2, 6 and 8, and 9 and 11. You're going to be able to collect free energy, which is very important in your first few days. And you're also going to want to buy energy refreshes. So... Uh, buying an energy refresh starts out at 50 crystals and then and the next one is 50 crystals again and then it increases from there. So it goes 100 crystals, 100 crystals, 100 crystals, 200 crystals, 200 crystals, etc. And it keeps increasing the more that you refresh your energy. So at this point the guide kind of breaks into different sections depending on how much you're going to spend on the game. A free to play player might only purchase you know, the first two 50 energy refreshes and maybe a couple of the 100 energy or 100 crystal refreshes. Um, and while a, a spending player might all go all the way up to 400 crystals or eight, uh, 900 crystals or whatever it jumps up to. So it really just depends on your spending level at this point. But what you want to try and do in your first day, if, if you're a free to play player, you want to get to at least rank 1000 or better. Um, preferably you get to rank 200 or better in your first day rank 200 or better has some advantage to advantages to it as related to arena tokens which we'll talk about later but uh, reaching rank 200 or better is ideal if you're a pay-to-play player or you've spent some money on some crystal and you have some crystals then you want to try and re reach rank 100 or better and honestly if you're gonna go all the way to 100 you might as well go to top 10 because Reaching the top 10 has a lot of advantages, especially for crystals. The uh, The top 100 players will always receive at least 100 crystals, but the top 10 players will always receive at least 250 crystals. And the rank one player will actually receive 500 crystals. So you can see 
taking rank one each day or you know the top five spots is going to net you a lot of crystals and it's going to be really really good for your progress in the in the first uh, week of playing the game so you know your first day try and reach top 10 ranks um, and if you go there you might as well go all the way to number one uh, you get you get your rewards at 6 p.m. local time. And local time is whatever you have the time zone set on your device to when you started playing the game. So theoretically, if you don't like, you know, if you don't like the game resetting at 12 a.m., the two most important times are in the day are 12 a.m. when the game resets and then 6 p.m. when uh, you receive your arena rewards. So if you don't like 6 p.m. local time, you could readjust the, the time zone for when you first start playing the game and uh, you know get a different reward timer if you want to maybe a less populated area or less populated time zone since there are 24 you know reward timers you could be on any one of those 24 but uh, yeah that pretty much wraps up your first day um, if you want instructions on the second and third days I'll be creating a new video for that but you can also go to the full text uh, guide on my website gamingupgrade.com and that will have instructions there but uh, like I said, you really want to push your advantage this first day. You want to try and get up as high of rank as possible and utilize those crystals and push an advantage early because that's going to give you access to new parts of the, the game and more additional resources, more crystals, more shards so that you can start, uh, so you can, you know, basically maintain your top 10 position as quickly as possible. Well, that's it for me, guys. Malo Alpito, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, and I will see you guys later. Peace.